Many of you who watch this channel actually know quite a bit about physics, which makes sense, of course, because, well, you're smart and that whole physics is everything thing. And you ask questions about things that don't make sense to you. A super common question is, how can a photon, which has no mass, have momentum? That's a good question, with a lot of complexity in the answer, so let's dive into it. Before I begin, I guess I should apologize. This video has more math in it than most. That's because the reason that people ask the question of how photons can have momentum is that they learned about momentum in a physics class, and they learned the equation for momentum. So I have to build the explanation around that equation. This equation says that momentum, which is written as p, is equal to an object's mass, written as m, times its velocity, which is written as v. p equals mv. That's the equation. And you immediately see the problem. While a photon of light travels at the speed of light, which is written as c, by the way, its mass is zero. And zero times the number is zero. So the momentum of a photon should be zero, right? I mean, it's a really good question. Yet physicists are certain that photons have momentum. So let me start with explaining this in terms of equations, then go to a more intuitive explanation, although even that's really not all that intuitive. It's going to be pretty cool, but you should expect that your brain cells are going to get a real serious workout here. First, let me remind you of the equations that you would have encountered in any introductory physics class. I already reminded you of the momentum one. There's also another equation that connects mass, velocity, and kinetic energy. This is kinetic energy, which is written as Ke, equals one-half times the mass, m, times the velocity, v, squared. So we say that Ke equals one-half mv squared. You probably remember all that. Now let me show you how kinetic energy and momentum are related. Let's start with the momentum equation, p equals mv. Now square both sides you get p squared equals m squared v squared. So far, so good, right? Now, divide both sides by m. On the right-hand side, the bottom m cancels one of the top m's, and you get p squared divided by m equals mv squared, which should remind you of something, specifically the kinetic energy equation. You can replace the m times v squared in the kinetic energy equation with this p squared over m thing, and what you find is that the kinetic energy equals the momentum squared divided by twice the mass. Ke equals p squared divided by 2m. Okay, the first conclusion to draw here is that in classical physics, and I remind you that these equations were devised back in Newton's time when they didn't worry about things moving near the speed of light. But even back then, we can see that kinetic energy and momentum are related. We have an equation with energy on one side and momentum on the other. And this kind of means that anything with kinetic energy must also have momentum. Of course, we still have that m kicking around, which is zero for photons, so I haven't really answered the question. And I didn't intend to at this point. I just wanted to show you that kinetic energy and momentum are related, even classically. Okay, now to get into something you might not have known. Let's move into this new material. And I want to tell you something, and that, that is that these equations aren't completely true. That's right, you've been lied to. Wake up, sheeple. The man is lying to you. Man, I have always wanted to say that in the video. Why should uh, others have all the fun? Of course, like a lot of times when people toss around the word sheeple, what I just said was a little misleading, and the real story is a bit complicated. The real truth is that those equations are special cases that only work for objects with mass that is moving at slow speeds. And of course, I should be upfront that when I say the man, the man is someone like me. So I guess you have to decide whether to believe me or not. But you should, because, you know, I know stuff. And it's way cool. Now comes the next surprise, and that surprise involves Einstein. Of course, Einstein was all about moving at super fast speeds, speeds near the speed of light, so you know that he's going to pop up in any discussion involving photons and momentum. And when you think about Einstein, you almost always think about his famous equation, E equals mc squared. And guess what? That equation's wrong too! Come on, sheeple, wake up! How long are you going to stay fooled? <laughs> okay, I promise, that's the last rant. But the rant 
has a super tiny kernel of truth. E equals mc squared is also an approximate equation and one that only works for objects with mass that are stationary. It's not a general equation and it doesn't work for massless objects, nor objects that are moving. In fact, I made a whole video just digging into the limitations of this equation. The link is down there in the description. Watch it later if you're interested. So now we're ready to get to the truth. I put the three equations I've mentioned so far here. E equals mc squared, p equals mv, and ke equals p squared divided by 2m. And all of these equations are just fine and correct, but they are all equations that only described objects with mass that move slowly. Those equations fail in other situations. It turns out that there is a more general equation that works for all situations, and it looks kind of like Einstein's famous equation. This equation is energy squared equals the momentum times the speed of light squared plus the mass of the object times the speed of light squared, all squared. E squared equals PC squared plus MC squared, all squared. Now this equation works for everything, massive objects, massless objects, things moving near the speed of light, things moving at the speed of light, and things that are stationary. And we can look at the special cases. For instance, let's see how it works in the special case of a photon. Since the photon has zero mass, this second term on the right-hand side goes to zero. And we have that energy equals momentum times the speed of light. So here we see that energy and momentum are equal, except for a constant. And if an object isn't moving, then its momentum is zero, which means that p is zero, which gets you back to Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. So I guess the first lesson is that when you learn an equation, it's super important to understand if it's a special case or not, and if it's a special case, when it applies and when it doesn't. The bottom line is that the familiar equation P equals mv just doesn't apply for massless photons, and the question of photon momentum, while completely sensible, arises from using the equation in a situation where it was never intended to be. I could spend a long time showing you how you can manipulate this general equation that equates energy, momentum, and mass, but I will leave that you to play around with if you want. And I put a link in the description to a couple of websites that do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. By the way, let me tantalize you a bit. That one half mv squared thing is itself only an approximation for kinetic energy that works only at very low velocities. There are more precise approximations. There are endless levels of complexity. So that's the equation -y way thinking about this. The equations very clearly show that energy and momentum are related, and that an object that has energy also has momentum, even if it has no mass. But maybe you're looking for something deeper, something more intuitive. You think that perhaps mass is somehow special. Well, let me disappoint you there, too. To first approximation, modern physics has proven that mass is an illusion. There is no mass. Now, I made an entire video on this topic, and I put a link in the description for you to watch. It's one of my favorite videos and definitely one of the most mind-blowing. But let me just sketch it out here for you. Just expect that everything you think that you know about mass is about to be upended, and watch the video to get the whole story. You are made of mass, which is true of anything that is made of atoms. The mass of objects made of atoms is found in the atoms, protons, and neutrons. The electrons pretty much don't matter. But protons and neutrons are made of smaller objects, which have very little mass, nearly none. So where does the mass of protons and neutrons come from? Those objects are orbiting around each other at crazy fast speeds. You can think of protons and neutrons as tiny subatomic tornadoes, vortices of motion and energy. And that's all they are. If you look at them, there is nearly no mass in the way that we intuitively think about mass. Mass is just energy. So, assuming that you're willing to accept that, and you really should watch that video because it shows this idea in far more detail, then moving mass is just moving energy. And, of course, a photon is moving energy. So, when you get right down to it, a moving photon or a moving proton are not so different. Both are nothing more than moving energy. So, if a moving proton has momentum, so does a moving photon. And that's really all there is to it. 
On the other hand, I predict that this whole topic has made you think very differently about mass and energy and how they really aren't all that different. The more you learn about the subatomic world, the more you learn that it's some crazy stuff down there. Okay, so this concludes our very quick tour through a very complicated topic. If you learned something about the video, you know the drill, like, subscribe, and share. While the first message is that photons certainly do carry momentum, I think the most important message is to always remember that equations only apply in certain situations, and if you try to use them incorrectly, you're going to get confused. And this leads me to my final message, which is that as you study physics at a deeper and deeper level, there's always something more to appreciate. And the more you appreciate, the more you realize that physics is everything.